Hello, 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 everyone. It's Kim from KDRP here in cloudy, cold, waiting for snow, southeastern Manitoba. It's currently minus 18 Celsius with a minus 25 wind chill factor, which is minus 1 Fahrenheit with a minus 13 wind chill factor. Winter is back in full force, but we expect that because we can even get snow into May. So, Anyway, today we're going to do some uh, fun flowers out of things that you might have lying around the house that you want to use up or if you want to put them in your journals, so you're looking for something different to do to put in. I'm just going to do a quick rundown of what I have done since Friday. Um, Friday we did the pressed paper flowers. I have to admit, I do like the way the tissue worked like the, the regular ordinary tissue paper that you use for gifts. And I followed a lot. Um, Kellyanne had done some on her embossing folders. So I tried that. And I have to admit, I'm a really big fan. That's going to make excellent little snippets and, and whimsical bits in my journals. So that was day 10. Day 11... I decided to press a bunch of tissue paper in my embossing folders just so that I've got something else to use when I'm working on a journal. So what I did was I just took chunks of tissue paper and I folded it up multiple times because my folder for one is small. And for two, if you just put a single paper or a double layer of paper in the embossing folder, it has a tendency to make holes. So I did a few different colors of tissue paper. I thought that they would just be nice little additions when I'm working on something. So that was day 11. Day 12, I did some tags. I like to make these thank you tags. I always have like little clusters and things that I've, I, I just have bunches of it. Um, used some funky yarns that I picked up at a thrift store. And these thank you tags, I like to have them in my purse. So when I'm leaving a tip at a restaurant or something, I also like to leave a little thank you tag. And they say, "Do it, you're doing a great job on all of them. So I keep these in my purse and I give them out. I've, I've given them to receptionists. I've given them to grocery store cashiers. I've given them to janitors in the mall. I just like to have them and just give a little happy spark to somebody's day. Day 13, I was thinking about what Anne had asked me on Friday, I think it was, throwing ideas at me, something that I may not have used, like what could you do with this in a journal? So I kind of took that to heart and I decided to use a zipper because she mentioned zippers. So I do have a box of zippers, surprise, surprise. And so I stapled some really heavy cardstock to the zipper itself, front and back of the zipper. And then the top I just covered in some gel print that I did. So I'm just going to use that as a pocket in the journal. So you'll tuck from the top, but it will also open not that it's going to spread or anything because I did it quite stiff at the bottom so it won't open. But it's just something a little different you could do. The next one I am going to attempt is I'm, I'm going to do it so that the zipper is spread. It won't be able to zip up because it will be glued down, semi-spread open. But that just opened up a whole new box of ideas for me. So that's day 13. Today is day 14. And what I did was a whole bunch of little mini clusters. I made some book page flaggy things. I don't know what they're called. Banners? Flags? Something like that. And so I took a piece of uh, onion bag and I put the onion bag down. I made a bunch of those little origami folded envelopes that I do but I use twinchy, so like a two inch square. So they're very, very tiny and cute. And so then I glued the envelope on top of the netting 
put a fish either on or under it, and then put little signs saying either gone fishing or here fishy fishy. So that was my day 14. And that's today. What I'm going to do tomorrow, I have no clue. Anyway, what we were going to do today was make some flowers for journals. We're going to use uh, flowers from old Lay's. Like, you know how you get those Lay's at the dollar store? So there's a flower and a clear long bead and then another flower and the bead. So I took one apart, gave me a bazillion and one flat flowers that, sure, you could glue them into a junk journal. That's kind of cute. But I've got a whole new idea to do with those. Also, we're going to do some flowers out of regular streamer paper, the crepe paper that we use for decorating for parties, that kind of thing. We're going to make some flowers from that. And then we all have, well, maybe not all of us, but quite a few of us have really bulky flowers that they're pretty. But you get tired of them fairly fast, or I do anyway. So mine are all discombobulated and, and taken apart already. So I bought a garland for $3 at Dollarama on Friday, I believe it was. Saturday, Thursday, sometime last week. Every day is a Saturday in our life. Uh, so anyway, it's got seven flowers and I'm just going to take one and show you how I make more flowers from the one bulky one. And I'm also going to show you how to make little tool puffs. When you get a boutonniere, quite often you get a little puff of tool along with the rosebud and the leaf for men's uh, boutonniere, corsage thingies. So I'm going to show you a cute way of making tool puffs so that they go nicely. Hi, back. Hi, back. Hi, Kelly. <laughs> Welcome back. Talk good much me. Wash my face. Can't do a thing with it. So I'm going to make some little tool puffs also. They can be used in journals, on cards, whatever. So let's start with the tool puff. This is not the, the big bulky tool that you get in crinolines, that kind of thing. This is just a little bit of tool ribbon that you get at Dollarama. One of these rolls goes a very long way. So you're just going to cut a piece off. I'd say that's not very straight, but it doesn't really matter. Uh, maybe two inches wide, two inches wide, and then you just cut it in half. So then you're going to take a piece of string. I'm just going to use green crochet cotton because that's what I've got sitting around. That's about eight inches approximately. Fold it in half so that you've got a loop. Crumple up your tool in the middle and wrap it and put your ends through the loop. And you're going to pull it tight. And then you've got a really cute little tool puff. The ones that are done in the boutonnieres are wrapped with wire and then wrapped with floral tape. I have a friend who's a florist. She's enlisted me in helping do the tool puffs for the boutonnieres many times. So I wanted to see how I could do it for junk journals. The nice thing about these is they go pretty darn flat, but they bounce back. So when you've got one of these... And then a little crepe paper flower, you can get a really cute little arrangement from that. Okay, so that's how I make tool puffs to go in junk journals, on tags, ATCs, that kind of thing. Really simple. And honestly, from a roll of this, you'll get a bazillion. Lasts forever because you're only using a two by two inch square. And of course, you could use any other kind of ribbons. Again, just some crochet cotton. You could use regular thread. You could use twine, whatever you've got. You just need to tighten the cinch the middle. So it, you could even use these as wings. Hey, Jan, how are you? 
just showing how to do tool puffs for in. Hi, Dawn. Welcome, welcome. Um, you can even use these little tool puffs as wings if you, you really wanted to. So that's how I do the tool puffs. Now, to do these little crepe paper flowers, you need about two inches of your streamer. Again, you buy a roll of streamer at the dollar store. You usually get them in packs of two. And it, if you're just making these little flowers out of them, they're going to last you for the rest of your life. So you're going to take about a two-inch piece. I didn't really measure. It could be two and a half. could be closer to three. Closer to three. And you're just going to fold it up three-quarters of the way. Make a fold. And then you're just going to start... Crunching and rolling. Just crunch and roll. And the thing with this, doing it so that it's got the fold, is it's going to give you that bit of bulk at the bottom and thinner petals up top. All right, Don, you lurk and work. I do that often too. So when you've got it all rolled up, you're going to take the, the end that you just rolled and you're just going to twist this bottom piece. And let's not spill the tea. So then you just, you know, use your fingers, loosen it up again. But it gives you a really cute little flower. You can make them bigger. You can make them smaller. The reason I like doing them this small, again, is because if you're putting them in a junk journal, you don't want things that are overly, overly bulky. So about a two to three inch piece is ample for in the junk journals. And then if the journal closes, it, it's still going to look like a flower because you've got all that bulk in the bottom from that roll. So I would dip it in some glue to hold it. But on a page, you know, like you can, you can fold it down a little bit on a, a card tag, what have you. It, it just gives you a cute little flower. Maybe I should have used something other than white. Or maybe what I'll do is, you know, you can always take a little bit of food coloring and, and just dip it in the edge so it's got the colored edge. So seriously, you can make a bazillion of these out of a roll. When I had my store, I used red ones and I did white, like the big tool that you use for crinolines puffs. And I did a whole garland for around the window. It was really cute, really, really cute. And then I had like, I wrapped it with, um, there's that um again. I wrapped it with the fairy lights for around the window. You can spray it with the alcohol ink. I have some food coloring in water here. Surprise, surprise. I've always got something under the desk. So I'll just take a very, oh, I just want a light brush. Let's use this. Just dip it in the, the water. Come back. It's alive, doesn't want to play. And, and you can just brush the edges. And because it's crepe paper, it's going to bleed down into it. So you could, you know, I like doing the white crepe paper because then I can dye it to match anything, right? But if you've got a roll of red, it's going to last you forever and that's all you've got is the red. Uh, I don't know how well you can see that. Can you see it? But it just gives a really delicate effect. So again, food coloring and water works great. Regular streamer stuff. Back under the desk you go. So also what I had talked about, yeah, pink, very, very soft, very delicate, very pastel -y. I also do, um, I use these when I do place setting 
name things. I'm, I'm going to do a video on it because they're just so cute. But that's a video for another day. Today is flowers. Let's make flowers. I think you weren't here yet. You weren't back yet, Kellyanne. I did some tissue or uh, toilet paper on my embossing folders. I did it quite thin. I had to pry it off with a toothpick, but it's sturdy, like quite sturdy, flexible. But I'm thinking that would just make a great background for a cluster. And of course, there's a little piece of that pink tissue paper that I had used for the other flowers sticking in there. Okay, so another flower that I like to do is, I, I don't know about you, but quite often you'll go to a party or something and you get one of those lays, those Hawaiian lays, flat flowers. There's a long, clear bead between them some leaves, but if you take it apart, you get a bazillion one little flowers. This one I actually painted and added glue to, so it's nice and stiff. I'm trying to give them body, right? So you get these flat flowers. Sure, you can glue them down on a junk journal page. They're cute. You could add a bit of edging, coloring to them, what have you. But I'm going to show you how to make them look a little bit fun. Flourishes for embossing folders. I just saw on Mark Montano, he just did a thing with his embossing folders. He took a piece of paper, opened the folder up, took a piece of paper, used a, a crayon like you would for a rubbing, and then he took water soluble inks dyes whatever and he brushed it over on top and the page was absolutely stunning because of the crayon resist oh gorgeous absolutely gorgeous so of course i'm gonna have to try that one day too okay so you've got your flat flower i like to snip them just a little bit deeper Not quite all the way to the center because you don't want individual petals. You still want them to be connected. But I snipped them in the camera, Kim, quite a bit closer to the center so that it's definitely much more individual. Now you're going to take your petals and you're going to put them all so that they overlap. almost like a fan. These two are too close together. Want them a little bit farther apart. Hey, Pam, how are ya? Your grandson is so cute. Then you're gonna take the petals and you can take them and you're gonna twist them without knocking your tea over. So then you have something that looks much more like a sweet pea than just that flat flower from the lay. Make sense? Does that make sense to everybody? So then I'm just gonna take a little piece of green painter's tape. You can use scotch tape, you can use floral tape, you can use whatever kind of tape you've got. I just happen to have a roll of painter's tape beside me and you just tape the bottom around the center. And again, from one lay, you can get quite a few flowers. So I just wrapped the tape around it Squeeze it tight, and you have just a, a little bit more decorative kind of flower to go in your journals. The nice thing is, is that it will lie flat 
quite flat, but it still poofs up. You know, another really cheap, fun way to make flowers. And because the lays come in a bazillion colors, you get all different colors and very simple, nice way to use up the lays. Again, you can take paint or dye or spritz them with um, those Dilusions glitter things if you want. But they're really kind of sweet. Okay, so that's flower number two. Now we're going to use one of these ugliest sin flowers from this garland. So the first thing I do is I figure out how it's put together and I take it apart. So it's got a center that comes apart. Then it's got this big plastic cone thing that's coming off. That's cute. That See, something like this I keep and then I use it for other things. This one as well. I'll use that in my uh, place settings. It will hold some wonderful things. So now I've got all these clumps of flowers, all these clumps of petals. That whole big flower would have been far too much in a junk journal. There's no way your journal would be so fat with it. So again, we could do it the same way we did those ones. You take them and, and you just wrap them into a... Twist them up, one set of petals, and it's flatter, it's cute, it's better than the um, flat, you know, you could do various things on this, right? You could glue that down, then have little bees and stuff on it, that'd be really cute. You've got a mint green pamerals cut out i have to go look is it on your page kellyanne so again like i say you just twist it you take a little bit of tape and you're just going to wrap it Oh, Pam's got the cutout. Are you going to post in Kellyanne's group, Pam? So again, as I say, it, it's a cute flower. It's not as bulky as the original one. It'll be cute in a journal, a little bit of a 3D effect. It will lie flat when the journal's closed. Okay. I will check Kellyanne's. I will check the group. So from this one flower, because there's all these petals, I'm going to get a flower out of each of them. So again, you just take them and you overlap them like a fan. and twist up the bottom. So the original garland that I got had seven flowers on it. And if I can get, what, one, two, three, four, five, six out of one of the flowers, one of the big flowers, 
and the garland was three dollars i'm getting quite a bang for my buck And again, I'm just using painter's tape. You could use clear plastic tape, floral tape, whatever you've got. I'm sure you could probably stitch them too. But again, this, this was a little trick from my girlfriend who's a florist showing me these things. And they really don't take that long to make. And then again, like I say, if you've got them with the tool puff, for a flower this size, I probably would do a bit bigger tool puff. See, when we do it with the wire, then we would wrap a little bit of tape around. Because it's on the stem and it's part of the boutonniere. So then it holds together nicer too as a tool puff. So you can make quite a nice little arrangement on the corner of a page and it's going to be flat when the journal's closed. Or you could do it on the front or you could do it on a card. It just makes something different. They're all going to turn out different because they're not going to roll the same. I really do like making them out of the crepe paper. And of course, the lays. To me, that looks like a sweet pea. I don't know if any of you guys grow flowers, but. So that's how I make a bunch of flowers out of things that. Roses, actually. If I had a rose, I don't think I, my silk roses are all out in the greenhouse, but those silk roses also make really wonderful little. Um, littler flowers instead of being so big and bulky. This really big one, I'm going to cut to the center so that it's easier to fold. And again, twist. Yeah. Th those flowers were pretty ugly, weren't they? So again, you know, I think that is much nicer than this. I guess it depends on what you're doing. But I mean, if I'm, this definitely would not go in a junk journal. If you consider this step up that it's got to hold the inner part of the petals together, that's, that's a lot of bulk in a journal. So, Jan, did you take one of those crocheted hearts with the um, flowers and stuff on? Were they crocheted flowers or were they silks? Yeah. Poppies and sweet peas. And you know, if, if you were wanting to give somebody something a little bit special, you could attach these to a button. In a little floral arrangement kind of thing. Because... You know, I'm good. Like I say, I'm going to get six flowers from this one. And that's going to make a really nice little 
bouquet compared to the one big clump? Well, I think so anyway. Something totally different from something not absolutely gorgeous. So things that your scarf is almost done? <gasps> How long is it? Kellyanne learned a couple of new crochet stitches last week on her live. Um, Wednesday, I taught her some crochet stitches and she's making a scarf and she's almost done. That's so awesome. The other reason I like painter's tape compared to floral tape, floral tape is waxed. That's why it wraps so tight and neatly and holds together. But it's a real pig to glue down onto anything. The floral tape, uh, the painter's tape you can glue down because it's just green masking tape, right? Long enough to wrap twice. Nice. So you're going to want the winter to last so that you can wear this gorgeous scarf. She's doing it in a variegated, it's purpleys and, and pinks and just gorgeous, gorgeous yarn. You can add little stamens to them too. I don't have any stamens left. You, you can buy bundles of stamens in the floral section in different places. Stem wire, you could do these onto when you're taping them. You could tape them to the top of a skewer and have long stemmed flowers to put in a vase. I just like doing them for journals, my place settings. Um, do, do, do. Those little crocheted hearts I make and decorate. I don't know if I've got any. I sent some off to Defy. Cornstarch and food color? Yeah. I guess I could probably take some yellow crochet cotton, glue it so that it's stiff, and then dip it in melted wax or something to make like a drop on the end for some stamens. Do we have a favorite? These I would put on the front of a journal. They're so big. These ones would go in a journal. These ones I would put in a journal. And of course, the tool puffs, you can make them bigger. You could use two pieces. I like the idea that I could use them as wings as well. Okay. You like the yellow one? The sweet pea one? Yeah. I have to admit that's one of my favorites. I do a, did a lot of these. Because really, our local thrift store gets these so often. So, you know, they sell them for 25 cents. Really can't complain about the price when you get this many. But, I mean, when you get stuff at the dollar store and you can take it apart and revamp it into something that you can use specifically for what you're looking for, it makes a very, very, very big difference.
Of course, these ones too, if you wanted, you could cut down the petals so that they're thinner and it would make a, a cuter flower. Let's do that. Actually, I'm gonna do it in three. And the nice thing <laughs> about these, really, that's still really wide. Let's get that still again. Um, really cost effective, you know? Really cost effective. It will be almost like a carnation. Okay, so I'm going to cut that right through to the center so that it rolls nice. And this one I'm just going to roll. Oh, that one's fun, right? Like it's fringy. It's a little bit more floppy than a carnation. It's more like a zinnia or a mum, chrysanthemum kind of ish. Suppose I could do that with the ones for the lays as well. You just have to cut and play, right? All right. So that's a cute one too. And again, because it's just one layer of petals, even though it's rolled, it will fold so flat, so flat for being in a journal. I've done ones like this with felt, where you take a long piece of felt. Okay, let's do it this way and you fold the strip of felt in half it would probably work for this too this is just crepe paper streamer and then you cut them fringe like So the, through the folded side, not the other side, not the open side. And then you roll it. So out of the felt, oh, that's cute too. Oh, my goodness. Where is a toothpick? I'm going to roll it around a toothpick because it would probably just be easier. Wait till you guys see this one. So I'm just rolling it around the toothpick because it's small, it's piddly, and my arthritis today is more than a low roar. We're expecting snow for the rest of the week. Maybe if I cut them just a little bit thinner, but look. Look how cute. See can, if I turn that one off. No. Yeah. Much better. 
just a really cute little flower. Come on, turn on. That one's really, really cute, I have to admit. So again, you know, using things that you have at home. Okay, I bought these because I've destroyed all my other silks. Some crepe paper streamer, an old lay. You can make some pretty little decorations for your journals if you're really into the florals. I'm going to wrap this in green tape. That'll give it a little bit of a stem, too. Hold it and make a stem. That's more like a carnation now. Yeah. I mean, I have done itty bitty tiny crepe paper flowers on inches using these and you just kind of scrunch it up, right? You just take a little strip like that, fold it in half, and you just scrunch it up really, really tight and spread it out. And it makes just a cute little flower because of the way the crepe paper is on this. Do it on the camera, too. So I've used that on like inches as little flowers. Crepe paper is a wonderful, wonderful thing. So again, you know, you could take a toothpick and, and spread it out just a little bit. But it just gives, like, on camera, just a little hint that it's a flower, but it's not. Baby's breath, yeah. So that's, that's all I have to show you ladies today. Pretty boring. <laughs> well, it's not, but something to brighten things up. Something to brighten things up. Like when I was doing the, the clusters for these tags, something like this tucked in behind even just adds something totally different to the card, right? And it's just a couple of petals of an ugly silk flower. Yeah, bunch of nothing. Our local thrift store sells rolls of this that people didn't want, 25 cents a roll. And of course, you can always get silks at the thrift store too. Well, thanks for watching. Thanks for watching. I'm not sure I'm on on Friday. It depends on the weather, but I'm going to say right now I'm not on Friday because I have an appointment. We're going to the new conservatory in the city. So I'm excited about that to see some live plants and things. Yeah, thanks, Jan. I've been eating so much junk lately that, uh, yeah, still on for tomorrow, Kellyanne. Still on for tomorrow. Tomorrow at noon on Kellyanne's channel, we're doing crochet stitches. 
did you want to do a pattern? I could show you how to crochet flowers with the stitches that you know. I guess I shouldn't wave that in front of the camera, make everybody see sick. Um, do you want to do a couple more stitches? Do you want to do a little flower with the stitches you know? What would you like to do tomorrow, Kel? A flower? Definitely. Okay, so just the regular yarn. I'm not going to show you how, using this stuff until you're comfortable. And then you'll know when you're comfortable to do that. Kellyanne, can I make you a mod? Can you put your channel thing in if I do that? Do I know how to make you a mod? Let me try this. There you go. Woo, look at me. I did it. I'm so excited. <laughs> you want to put Pam's in too, Kellyanne, if you don't mind? I'm learning, Pam. I'm learning. Slow but sure. This kind of stuff, I have no problem with, right? Anything electronic, not so much. Not so much. That's why I haven't tried StreamYard yet. I'll just visit on Kellyanne's channel <laughs> for now. Jan, you're going to have to get a channel. Oh, while I've got you guys here, I was thinking, trying to talk to Kel about this, but she's got a lot on her plate right now. I have a collection of old craft books from the 80s, 70s, that kind of thing. So I was thought, thinking maybe on throwback, do a th throwback Thursday kind of thing, pull out one of the old magazines and maybe we could do a craft from an old pattern book something that they would make for church bazaars from way back yes no takers do it in the evening instead of during the day i have no idea who's on thursday evenings i started making a chart and I put it someplace safe, you know, how that works with me. That's not it. That's not it. That's a gel print. Yeah, I put it someplace safe. Here it is. Um, Dawn, are you that in the blah, blah, blah? Are you on Thursday evenings? Oh, Beth is on Thursday evenings, isn't she? I don't know. You know how to share channels? Okay, I'm going to make you a mod too. Won't let you. Oh, no. Okay, I made Pam a mod too. We'll see what happens. Are you a mod? Did that work? Says you're a mod. Why aren't you blue? There you go. Oh, Kellyanne, you got it. Okay, so that one's Pam's. We call Pam Pam Can. She did a video last week. She was fixing her dryer. So she had it all taken apart. And she was fixing her dryer by herself. It's just amazing, Jan. Absolutely awesome. So the one that Pam just posted is Kellyanne's. Crystal Daisies is Kellyanne's channel. 
And we are doing a StreamYard live stream tomorrow at noon. Yeah, Pam was fixing your dryer. And then she did another video with her grandson. He is so cute. These ladies have been doing videos and have moderated for other people in the past. So it's nice that they know what they're doing. I really like this one so much better than these. Like, these are cute, but this one is fun. I think I'm going to fringe those other ones up, too. Oh, the part for your sister's microwave arrived. So you're going to do a video fixing the microwave tomorrow night or tonight? Kellyanne is actually on tonight, Jan. She does an uh, embroidery. Stitching, stitching, no video? Okay. Kelly, I'm out of your two. Okay, a couple of new stitches. You know what? I can show you how to do the flower, and you can always go back and try it as well. What are your videos tonight, Kellyanne? I know that you're doing the new stitches. Oh, the prompt along. So, and then stitches at nine. No, Kellyanne is on this evening at seven Eastern, which is for your time. I think because you and I are two hours different, right, Jan? So if she's one hour different than me, that's three hours difference for you. Dawn, are you still here? I know I have a hard time keeping who's live when. Okay, so Kellyanne is on at 7 with the prompt along. So she pulls prompts and you work like in your art journal, that kind of thing. And you craft along with her, create along with her. So... Then tomorrow afternoon, we do the crochet. Pam, do you have a set schedule? Okay, that's Dawn, a uh, crafty vis visage. And Pam has no set schedule. Okay. But you'll be able to check it out on on replay if you're interested. That's a nice thing with these YouTube things. The replays are awesome. When I was doing that big, right, me too, Kellyanne. When I was doing all those uh, costumes for a flat fashion show, I bought a lot of fake flowers. I did a Gaia costume. So it was a long dress and I sewed silk flowers all over it and I remade some flowers because it was getting pretty heavy with all the big ones and that made a, a just an absolutely lovely could have been a fairy costume too I guess but 
I called it Mom Nature. Another use for these. Or even on little girls' bows for the hair, right? They're lighter. If you want to make some headbands for Fiona Jan, you could make her a daisy chain almost. Just thinking of other uses for these flowers, I just really like this. It's almost like a cheerleader's pom-pom. Yay! Then she could be Queen of the May. Okay, Kellyanne, take care. I'll try and make it tonight. I do have a, a group thing that I do Tuesday nights for Defy now. So I'll, I'll try and make it for the 7 o'clock one. If not, I will see you tomorrow. Take care. And it's been just about an hour, so I think I'm going to let everybody get on with their day. And I hope that you took some ideas away from this. Thank you all for being here. I really appreciate your help and being my mods now. I've got mods. Yay, me. I'm growing up. Or all my channels growing up. I'll never grow up. So thank you all for being here. Love you. Thanks again. Don't forget to give me a thumbs up if you had fun. And I will see you next week because I won't be here Friday. Bye, everyone.